Isn't it amazing? Ten-year-old Violet Alden said as she gazed out the backseat window of the Alden's rented van. No matter where you look, all you see is corn, corn, and more corn. I like corn on the cob, said Benny, Violet's six-year-old brother. Iowa produces more corn than any other state, their older sister Jessie said. Jessie, who was 12, had read quite a bit about Iowa during their three-hour plane ride from Connecticut that morning. Did you know corn is used to make lots of things besides food? Fourteen-year-old Henry Alden piped up from the front seat. I learned in school that there's corn in fuel, batteries, detergents, and sometimes even clothes. Really? Benny wrinkled his nose. Is there corn in my shirt? He stared down at his T-shirt. I don't know if there's corn in that particular shirt, Henry said with a laugh. But I know that cornstarch is used to make the fibers stronger in certain fabrics. Henry was glad he remembered so much from the corn unit. All this talk about corn is making me hungry, Benny said as he rubbed his stomach. We just had lunch in the airport, Benny, Violet reminded him. I know, but I love corn on the cob, Benny said, with butter. Well, I'm sure you'll be able to get something to eat soon, Grandfather said, smiling at Benny through the rearview mirror. We should be arriving at Ken's farm in a few minutes. Ken Johnson was an old friend of Grandfather's. He had invited James Alden and his grandchildren to visit during the King Corn Days Festival and see his famous corn maze. People came from all over Iowa to see Ken Johnson's corn maze. Each year's maze was bigger and better than the one before it. I can't wait to see the corn maze, Violet said eagerly. What's a corn maze again? Benny asked. Well, you know what a maze is, Jessie said. You have a book of mazes at home, remember? A maze is a kind of puzzle where there's a picture and you begin in one of the openings and follow the paths and try to find your way out again. And a corn maze is a maze that's cut into a cornfield, Grandfather explained. You mean we'll actually get to walk inside the corn maze and find our way out? Benny asked. Yes, Grandfather replied. Oh boy! Benny squealed with excitement. I can't wait either! There's a sign on that fence ahead, Henry said. He pointed at a plain white sign with black lettering that read, Johnson's Corn Maze, Turn Here. Grandfather turned onto a narrower road. There were no other vehicles in sight, just fields of corn that stretched as far as the eye could see. Mr. Johnson sure lives a long way from town, Violet said. And I'm sure he's quite happy about that, Grandfather replied. Ken never was much of a city person. He likes the wide open space of the country. He likes to be where things are growing. That's why he quit his job all those years ago and bought this farm. Look at all those vegetables for sale, Jesse said as they passed a small white farmhouse. There were bins of corn, tomatoes, carrots, onions, cucumbers, beans, and squash spread out across the yard in front of the house. A sign in the driveway read, Peggy's Vegetable Stand. Ken said we'd pass a vegetable stand right before we got to his place, Grandfather said. His house should be the next one. There it is, Benny cried, wiggling in his seat. Grandfather turned in at the next driveway. He followed the dusty drive that led between a dark red barn and a tall white farmhouse with a huge wraparound porch. Hey, Mr. Johnson has vegetables for sale too. Violet pointed at a picnic table that was piled high with cucumbers, beans, tomatoes, and squash. Grandfather drove around behind the house and parked in front of a wide cornfield. As soon as the van came to a stop, all four doors opened and the Aldens hopped out. Is that the corn maze? Benny stared wide-eyed at the wall of corn in front of him. The corn stood even taller than Grandfather. 